Greetings, this will be a quick walkthrough on downloading and initially setting up the Excel checkbook template. Once you see the thank you page for your purchase, you can click the link to download the file. If your browser supports it, I do recommend using the Show All Downloads button. And after download, if you're on Microsoft Windows, you'll definitely want to go find that file in Windows Explorer, point at the file name, do a right click, and go to the Properties screen. And on the Properties window, click the Unblock option, click OK, and then you can go ahead and open up the Excel spreadsheet. The first time you open up the spreadsheet, you'll likely see a security warning because macros are embedded within the spreadsheet. So you want to click on the Enable Content button. Next, I do recommend giving your spreadsheet a permanent name and a permanent folder location. So I will go to the file menu and click on save as, and I'll choose to call my spreadsheet simply just my checkbook and click the save button. As you start to review the spreadsheet, for example, visiting the first register, you will see sample transactions. And I do recommend that you clear those out. Uh, you do want to be careful, though, as you go to clear these out. So for example, the balance column uh, does have a formula. So if I click my cursor in one of those cells, I'll see the formula that's represented up here. So do not erase or clear the balance column. Uh, what I like to do is I'll click my cursor, for example, uh, in that particular row, and uh, I can use my mouse, hold down my mouse, and highlight over to the deposit column, but making sure I do not clear out the balance column. So after highlighting that section, I can hit the delete key on my keyboard to clear out those entries. Uh, next, subcategory is another one that I'll want to clear out, but I want to be careful not to clear out the category or type columns. Those are also formulas. So strictly looking at the subcategory, I'll click on salary, hold down my mouse, and highlight through those sample subcategory entries, hit the delete key on my keyboard to clear out those. Uh, for starting balance, I might pick, you know, which day of the month that I'd like to begin putting in my entries. I'll pick January 1st for 2024 starting balance, and, you know, maybe put in whatever that balance might be from a recent bank statement or from viewing my bank account online. Let's say it's $1,500. And then from here, I can start to put in actual entries or if my bank supports the downloading of my transactions to a CSV file or Excel file, you can potentially just get that reformatted, cleaned up so it's got a similar column structure layout and then copy and paste those. But if I want to do some manual entry, you know, I'm, I'm now ready to start putting those in and I can start to put in any sample entries. For example, perhaps a grocery store purchase that was for $176. And then subcategory, I can click and designate that, uh, you know, this was a grocery uh, purchase. Okay, so that's a really quick sample entry. And something else I probably want to do is, is start to personalize uh, my checkbook. So, for example, checking account one, it's not very meaningful. So perhaps this is, you know, my uh, personal account. So maybe I'll label that. And the other thing I might want to do is start to rename the worksheets at the bottom. So instead of register one, I'll do a right click and choose rename and, and call this, uh, you know, the personal account. So again, probably something I'd want to repeat for the other spreadsheets that are here. Register two might re uh, right click, rename that one. Uh, give that a new name up here, perhaps call that, you know, joint account. And again, I probably want to clear out the sample entries. So I'm just going to be very careful to only go as far over as deposit with my mouse, hit the delete key to clear that out. Do the same with the subcategory and, uh, but go ahead and specify whatever the correct uh, starting balance is for whatever date I want to want to start on. In similar fashion, um, I probably would, would want to visit the reconcile uh, page here and make sure that the, you know, the register names are reflected here, you know, it makes sense. Um, so if, if your first one happens to be personal account, uh, yeah, certainly that's already there, joint account, but you know, just make sure that these are labeled in something meaningful to you, knowing that uh, they do need to stay in this order, uh, uh, as in, you know, this is the first one, the second one, the third one, uh, etc. Next, uh, the first time you visit the dashboard screen, 
uh, you will need to do a couple things before the dashboard is going to correctly update. So if you try to use the refresh charts button, for example, it will not correctly update. So it's important to take note of the steps that are outlined in this sheet called notes, where it talks about fixing the data source setting. So I'll uh, do a quick demonstration of what that uh, what that means. So it doesn't matter really what sheet you're currently on, but you will want to visit the data menu and under the button for gate get data, you'll see a choice for data source settings. The current data source setting that will be there after download will not be correct because you'll have a different folder location and file name for your checkbook spreadsheet. So you want to click on the change source button and then you'll need to click on the browse button to go find your current folder and file name. So after clicking on browse, I get this dialog box and here's my new permanent file name that I gave my spreadsheet. So I'll choose that, uh, click import, click OK and click close. Okay. And then after uh, uh, doing so, if I go to back to the visit dashboard screen, uh, there is a little note there that says, you know, please, please save the file before clicking to refresh. So we'll go ahead and click my Excel save button. And now when I click on the button to refresh the charts, it is now showing just the very minimal sample entries that I put into the spreadsheet. Okay, and of course, as time permits, you'll probably want to visit the future transaction screen, put in entries that, that make sense to you if you choose to use that feature. Also, the uh, card debt goal tracking screen, you'll probably want to erase the sample entries that are here and populate that with the uh, ones that make sense to you. And as you start to use the spreadsheet, you'll likely want to visit the category screen to make sure that these subcategories and categories uh, make sense to the way that you'd like to track your spending. Okay, and that is a super quick walkthrough of just getting initially set up with a spreadsheet. I hope you enjoy.